Hi, I'm James Cuthbertson, Managing Director of Dark Star Brewing Company. Okay, so we were born in the uh, cellar of the Evening Star Pub in Surrey Street in Brighton uh, with a tiny brew kit, just enough to brew uh, beer for upstairs uh, for the punters in the pub, um, say back in 94, and that really was the, the genesis of things. I suppose we were um, craft brewers before the term was, was invented, and um, some would probably say we were cask beer pioneers, so some of the first uh, brewers to really embrace that uh, American hop profile in our hop forward beers. Um, so that was the early days in there and we, um, we, we outstripped that and in 2000 we moved to a place called Moonhill Farm just outside Haywards Heath and um, we continued to grow. I think we were quite fortunate in our, um, we had the, um, the, uh, the King and Barnes um, disappeared and opened up some, um, some room for us there. Um, we also had the, um, the duty escalator the small brewers um, helped us break new markets that perhaps we, we wouldn't have done so. I think we've been quite a lucky business and uh, we kind of rode the, the, what then became the craft beer tide. So we've moved along quite nicely in 2010, then we moved to Partridge Green, uh, site was opened by Roger Protz in the, in the January of 2010. And we had a massive site, it was very much an all in moment where um, everyone put everything they, they had into it, um, including what seemed to be 24 hours a day to try and build something that, that probably resembled a, a proper business at that time where we had an accountant and, and, uh, and things like that. So it was, that was our big move in 2010. And at that time we, we had a very big space that we didn't know what to do with. But again, it seemed to be that we always got the, that we always were bad planners because everywhere we go, we seem to outgrow quite quickly. And we found that that site in Partridge Green got pretty busy pretty quickly. And then uh, earlier this year, the last piece of our history, um, we were um, approached by Fuller's and in, two, uh, in February this year we did a deal where they bought the uh, interest of the, um, of the brewery. So our new, um, our new chapter is, is under um, Fuller's ownership but it was still very much our own um, passion and direction um, at the heart of Partridge Green. Yeah, there's been lots of talk recently about minority stakes and majority stakes, but yeah, they, they did buy the lot. When we, when we sat down and talked about this, it, was, it started off end of last year, so end of 17, and uh, it was a meeting in a pub talking about our stresses and strains as a growing business, what we were going to do, and that was with uh, the MD of, uh, of Fuller's. And it became really obvious quite quickly that they'd made all the mistakes that we've made and those that we were going to make. So I say all the best things happen in pubs, and, and we kind of worked out quite quickly that there may be something to do here. So it was a couple of meetings later that we worked out that we were, that we were going to sell the business because it gives them a business that allows a bit more creativity maybe where they have um, a lot of people that love London Pride and the things that they do but maybe just for us it gives them permission to do um, more small batch um, some, some more risky beers that we're probably best known for so it made a perfect fit into their business and also it allows them to bring Dark Star beers into their estate but the conversation was never about putting Dark Star into the fullest estate entirely it was about keeping that um, independence and that's really what's happened so we sat down we worked out what we needed what investment did we need to take us from being that hobby into something that could I mean two examples would be we're gonna have a canning line going in this year we'd never have done that um, but it's a it's fantastic to have that facility a barrel aging room we've always wanted to do barrel aging and we've never had um, we've never had the expertise as well as the funds it's two things you know you can lean on the likes of George Young there um, who's you know a great brewer and lean on their expertise but also there's some business now in there that and, and some IT skills some infrastructure skills so 100% means 100% ultimately um, Fuller's own the Dark Star business but they're grown up they're family owned and privately owned they understand that businesses need to breathe people need permission and just to come in and change it and make it a, a smaller Fuller's was never the idea it's not what they've done and, and really we've got a lot of freedom and uh, we'll keep pushing that freedom until someone says otherwise I think we have to look at is then they're, they're not a business that messes about with things so um, you see some people take over a brand and they kill it and uh, that's not what they do we had two th evidence I'd evidence that with the heart they bought in Chandos Street always a great pub run under Binny they came in they bought that that was our biggest customer we did two vans a week in there massively important to us and we thought oh we're gonna lose that now Fuller's are in well, Fuller's didn't go in and change everything they just invested a load of money in the cellar and made it safer bigger um, and they did the right thing. And I think if I quote Simon Dodd, the MD there, when we said from the get-go, it was always about doing the right thing. 
and that's what they've done. So I would say that they've evidenced that in their actions before now in a pub that we love and continue to love and continue to sell two vans a week into. Um, so no, I, I, and, and it's a family business. They get beer, you know, it's not a business run by spreadsheets. They've got some smart guys running spreadsheets, but ultimately it's about getting the beer right. And um, we are now 14 weeks into it and I've seen no evidence of the contrary. Quality first, consistency first, and uh, and then constant sort of um, improvement and in, uh, investment in our site. So um, I have no reason to believe it'd be any different. They're good people. So Fuller's buy their pubs, that's the, the truth. And we had leasehold pubs and we have one uh, freehold which is owned by one of our founders, Peter Halliday. Um, so they, they weren't in the deal, so they're outside. So they still have absolutely the same access to Dark Star beers as before. Um, although they're not strictly in the Dark Star business, but they're still ones that we, we run as directors of the old Dark Star Brewing Company. So should be much the same. So I think we were pretty much a perfect match because as I said, we kind of did the bits that Fuller's didn't do and they had that embarrassment of riches when we looked over the fence. And I don't mean that just in funding, I mean that in um, infrastructure. So um, in, in the accountancy side of things, um, in the buying power, of course, it shouldn't be underestimated. They're buying massive volumes compared to us. So it allowed us to be um, more competitive and meet some of the, you know, particularly in the off trade, it's tough out there. You know, you've got to try and you never want to take a backward step on ingredients and quality. But if jointly you can buy better, it means you don't have to compromise. So you keep the best ingredients, the best processes, produce the best beer, and and that that sort of that that works. That was a ma again a massive a massive plus for us. Um, and the the process generally was just a really easy one. It was just a natural fit. If it had been a venture capitalist business or um, or someone else, it would have been a different story. Frankly, um, we we would have found it very difficult to justify it to ourselves as much as. Um, as anything else and that wouldn't have worked. It was a deal that was done with a handshake. It was old fashioned, you know, there was paperwork because lawyers always bring paperwork into it. But um, we worked out what we thought it was fair and it allowed for respect for what we built up and respect for what they were gonna put in going forward. And we struck something that we thought was, was fair and equitable. And in fairness to the guys there, we shook hands, the deal was done, it was old fashioned. It was, um, it was done properly. Yeah, I don't think there's much of that around these days. So we were really constricted. It's, it's about numbers of different beers. We always had too many beers we wanted to brew and not enough time, not enough capacity. So one of the decisions we made after the Fuller's uh, deal happened was to, we, we were wholesaling quite a lot of beer for other breweries, which meant that we had a lot of uh, empty casts in the yard, um, a lot of cold store space that was needed. So that was one pinch point. And when I talk about leaning on things that Fuller's do well or have more resource to do, um, logistically, we had to hold a lot of beer at Partridge Green. So when we took the decision not to wholesale, it meant it was just our beer, saved a lot of the yard space. And now we um, we go into their distribution system. So it goes into Fuller's pubs, of course, but also to all of our free trade pubs as before. So for example, we would go into Brighton twice a week, Fuller's going to Brighton three times a week. So it was never a backward step. There's been work getting it right, but it, it, the principles sound and we'll make it work. So that was really good. So more room in the yard because we're just doing dark star beers the other point was that um we can then move that other the beer away so when we we brew we then move it down to horn dean the distribution depot and we have a cold store that was absolutely rammed and now is pretty much got one or two brews in it any one time so that gives me room for more tanks for a barrel aging room to do ca you know, to short run cans um yeah, a bunch of stuff it's 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 a playground now it's a bit Willy Wonka um, so all the whereas we have a big list and then have a short list I've probably got a big list and a uh, somewhere between a long list and a short list so we'll, we'll see in the next 12 months um, we'll, the proof will be in the pudding can you tell us about some of those upcoming brews things you might be working on um, I think the barrel aging project probably personally is the most exciting thing because we can we can brew a beer and then utilize various different barrels with that so you know brandy um, whiskey we look at some wine stuff so I think if there's a project uh, and that of course that that for me is the one that's the dream you know that's that's the one we're gonna make happen and you've got like John Keeling at Fuller's who's been barrel aging beer for years so a bit of expertise and a bit of investment and now the site space yeah happy so next as for the next three years in the future of Dark Star more innovation more small pack cans bottles bottles particularly I think are, are interesting I'm not sure the cans quite gonna replace the bottle on the table at home um, as, as some people might have predicted. So a bit Willy Wonka, as I said before, I'd like to think that there's no no rules. We have a, a small test kit in the brewery and whilst we have a quite a uh, strict order which we're, we're testing new brews, when the brewers aren't brewing those beers, they have complete freedom, no budgets to do that. So I expect that kind of freedom of thought and innovation to come through in some of the beers. But you know, it'll be different, but there's also a point at which you can get edgy and you get edgy for edgy's sake. I still think we're a session brewery 
and I think we're 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 obsessive about consistency. So we want every beer to be to be great. I think one of the issues with the market at the moment may be that there's such a quest for new and it's become a sport, you know, beer blogging and stuff. It's who, you know, can, can Instagram it first, talk about it, bore someone about it first. And I think maybe there's a little bit of me that says, you know, beer also is there to make you feel good, to enjoy, and you don't need to necessarily have a, you know, a, a degree in beer or whatever to, to enjoy it, just relax. And I think I want to kind of champion that a bit more. So we'll do more innovative stuff, but we kind of do it without taking ourselves quite too seriously. Um, uh, and I say one of the things that we'll innovate a, a lot, but we'll also make sure that our R&D is right so that we're producing good beer, not beer for new beer's sake. And, uh, too much of the industry now is um, is brewing beer for, it's tomorrow's chip paper is the view. So they don't invest the time in getting the beer right because they're in that sport mode for new, new, new. So yeah, innovation, loads of new beers, but never without loads of care before we release them and stick our name on them. Oh, so yes, yeah, so exporting and um, again, you know, I talked about looking over the fence at Fuller's and saying what do they do well and uh, what do we not do. We've never done exporting. You look at, I was quite hopefully fondly uh, compare us to Thornbridge, who I think are a great brewery and, uh, and smart guys and they've always done bottles. They you know, were really strict about what they do and what they stand for and where quality was and they did bottles and doodle bottles brilliant they've got a great export market we've never done it i mean we looked at us running the business if we had an export inquiry we might do it if we got round to it we might but we probably got in the too difficult box nick who um our, our produ- production director just you know busy guy so you get an export inquiry and needs all the paperwork with it just it was difficult to get that to the top of the pass so we did some things but you look at fuller's i think they have a half a dozen people in their export department so the bold us on the edge of that to give us that volume which will help us be more affordable back home and competitive, all good. So I can expect some in that small pack piece, there'll be some more export coming in. I hope so, be nice.